Namaste, Dhanavat Pranam. By the instruction and grace of our spiritual master, Om Vishnu Pad Paramahamsa, Sri Pad Bhakti Madhava Puri Maharaj, we are here reading Srimad Bhagavatam, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Canto 3, the status quo, chapter 25, text 38. Karhichin mat para shanta rupe nang shanti no me nimisole titi ye shamaham priya atma shutas cha shakaguru shurido daivam ishtam. The Lord continued, My dear mother, devotees who receive such transcendental opulences are never bereft of them. Neither weapons nor the change of time can destroy such opulences. Because the, de uh, because the devotees accept me as their friend, their relative, their son, preceptor, benefactor, and supreme deity, they cannot be deprived of their possessions at any time. Purport. It is stated in Bhagavad Gita that one may elevate himself to the higher planetary systems, even up to Brahmaloka, by dint of pious activities. But when the effects of such pious activities are finished, one again comes back to this earth to begin a new life of activities. Thus, even though one is promoted to the higher planetary system for enjoyment and a long duration of life, still that is not a permanent settlement. But as far as the devotees are concerned, their assets, the achievement of devotional service, and the consequent opulence of Vaikuntha, even on this planet, are never destroyed. In this verse, Kapiladev addresses his mother as Shantarupa, indicating that the opulences of devotees are fixed, because devotees are eternally fixed in Vaikuntha atmosphere, which is called Shantarupa, because it is made of the mode of pure goodness undisturbed by the modes of passion and ignorance. Once one is fixed in the devotional service of the Lord, his position of transcendental service cannot be destroyed, and the pleasure and service simply increase unlimitedly. For the devotees engaged in Krishna consciousness, in the Vaikuntha atmosphere, there is no influence of time. In the material world, the influence of time destroys everything. But in the Vaikuntha atmosphere, there is no influence of time or of the demigods, because there are no demigods in the Vaikuntha planets. Here, our activities are controlled by different demigods. Even if we move our hand and leg, the action is controlled by the demigods. But in the Vaikuntha atmosphere, there is no influence of the demigods or of time. Therefore, there is no question of destruction. When the element... When the time element is present, there is the certainty of destruction. But when there is no time element, past, present, or future, then everything is eternal. Therefore, this verse uses the words na nakshanti, indicating that the transcendental opulences will never be destroyed. The reason for freedom from destruction is also described. The devotees accept the Supreme Lord as the most dear personality and reciprocate with him in different relationships. The devotees accept the Supreme Lord as the most dear personality and reciprocate with him in different relationships. They accept the Supreme Personality of Godhead as the most dear friend, the dear most relative, the dear most son, the dear most preceptor, and the dear most well-wisher and deity. The Lord is eternal. Therefore, any relationship in which we accept him is also eternal. It is clearly confirmed herein that the relationships cannot be destroyed, and therefore the opulences of those relationships are never destroyed. Every living entity has the propensity to love someone. We can see that if someone has no object of love, he generally directs his love to a pet animal like a cat or a dog. Thus, the eternal propensity for love in all living entities is always searching for a place to reside. From this verse, we can learn that we can love the Supreme Personality of Godhead as our dear most object, 
as a friend, as a son, as a preceptor, or as a well-wisher. And there will be no cheating and no end to such love. We shall eternally enjoy the relationship with the Supreme Lord in different aspects. A special feature of this verse is the acceptance of the Supreme Lord as the Supreme Preceptor. Bhagavad Gita was spoken directly by the Supreme Lord, and Arjuna accepted Krishna as guru or spiritual master. Similarly, we should accept only Krishna as the supreme spiritual master. Krishna, of course, means Krishna and his confidential devotees. Krishna is not alone. When we speak of Krishna, Krishna means Krishna uh, in his name, in his form, in his qualities, in his abode, and in his associates. Krishna is never alone, for the devotees of Krishna are not impersonalists. For example, a king is always associated with his secretary, his commander, his servant, and so much paraphernalia. As soon as we accept Krishna and his associates as our preceptors, no ill effects can destroy our knowledge. In the material world, the knowledge which we acquire may change because of the influence of time. But nevertheless, the conclusions received from Bhagavad Gita, directly from the speeches of the Supreme Lord, Krishna, can never change. There is no use interpreting Bhagavad Gita. It is eternal. Krishna, the Supreme Lord, should be accepted as one's best friend. He will never cheat. He will always give his friendly advice and friendly protection to the devotee. If Krishna is accepted as a son, he will never die. Here we have a very loving son or child, but the father and mother, uh, or those who are affectionate towards him, always hope, may my son not die. But Krishna actually never will die. Therefore, those who accept Krishna, or the Supreme Lord, as their son, will never be bereft of their son. In many instances, devotees have accepted the deity as a son. In Bengal, there are many such instances, and even after the death of the devotee, the deity performs the Shraddha ceremony for the father. The relationship is never destroyed. People are accustomed to worship different forms of demigods, but in Bhagavad Gita, such a mentality is condemned. Therefore, one should be intelligent enough to worship only the Supreme Personality of Godhead in his different forms, such as Lakshmi Narayan, Sita Ram, and Radha Krishna. Thus, one will never be cheated. By worshiping the demigods, one may elevate himself to the higher planets. But during the dissolution of the material world, the deity and the abode of the deity will be destroyed. But one who worships the Supreme Personality of Godhead is promoted to the Vaikuntha planets where there is no influence of time, destruction, or annihilation. The conclusion is that the time influence cannot act upon devotees who have accepted the Supreme Personality of Godhead as everything. Texts 39 through 40. Imham lokam tataivamum. Atmanam ubhayainam, Atmanam anuhecheha, Eraya pasha vogriha, Vishruja sarvan anyamscha, Mam evam vishvato mukam, Vajantyanan yaya bhaktya, Tanmrityur ati paraye. Thus, the devotee who worships me, the all-pervading Lord of the universe, in unflinching devotional service, gives up all aspirations to be promoted to heavenly planets or to become happy in this world with wealth, children, cattle, home, or anything in relationship with the body. I take him to the other side of birth and death. Purport. Unflinching devotional service as described in these two verses means engaging oneself in full Krishna consciousness or devotional service, accepting the Supreme Lord as all in all. 
since the Supreme Lord is all-inclusive. If anyone worships him with unflinching faith, he has automatically achieved all other opulences and performed all other duties. The Lord promises herein that he takes his devotee to the other side of birth and death. Lord Chaitanya therefore recommended that one who aspires to go beyond birth and death should have no material possessions. This means that one should not try to be happy in this world or to be promoted to the heavenly world, nor should he try for material wealth, children, houses, or cattle. How liberation is imperceptibly achieved by a pure devotee and what symptoms are have uh, and what the symptoms are have been explained. For the conditioned soul, there are two statuses of living. One status is in this present life and the other is our preparation for the next life. If I am in the mode of goodness, then I may be preparing for promotion to the higher planets. If I am in the mode of passion, then I shall remain here in a society where activity is very prominent. And if I'm in the mode of ignorance, I may be degraded to animal life or a lower grade of human life. But for a devotee, there is no concern for this life or the next life, because in any life, he does not desire elevation in material prosperity or a high grade or low grade life. He prays to the Lord, my dear Lord, it does not matter where I am born, but let me be, be born even as an ant in the house of a devotee. A pure devotee does not pray to the Lord for liberation from this material bondage. Actually, the pure devotee never thinks that he is fit for liberation. Considering his past life and mischievous activities, he thinks that he is fit to be sent to the lowest region of hell. If in this life I am trying to become a devotee, this does not mean that in my many past lives I was 100% pious. That is not possible. A devotee is therefore always conscious of his real position. Only by his full surrender to the Lord, by the Lord's grace, are his sufferings made shorter. As stated in Bhagavad Gita, surrender unto me, and I will give you protection from all kinds of sinful reaction. That is his mercy. But this does not mean that one who has surrendered to the lotus feet of the Lord has committed no misdeeds in his past life. A devotee always prays, for my misdeeds may I be born again and again, but my only prayer is that I may be, uh, that I may not forget your service. The devotee has that much mental strength and he prays to the Lord, may I be born again and again, but let me be born in the home of your pure devotee so that I may again get a chance to develop myself. A pure devotee is not anxious to elevate himself in his next birth. He has already given up that sort of hope. In any life in which one is born as a householder or even as an animal, one must have some children, some resources, or some possessions. But a devotee is not anxious to possess anything. He is satisfied with whatever is obtainable by God's grace. He is not at all attached to improving his... <clears throat> He is not at all attached to improving his social status or improving the status of the education of his children. He is not neglectful. He is dutiful, but he does not spend too much time on the upliftment or temporary household or social life. He fully engages in the service of the Lord. And for other affairs, he simply spares as much time as absolutely necessary. Yatar ham. Upayunjata. Such a pure devotee does not care for what is going to happen in the next life or in this life. He does not care even for family, children, or society. He fully engages in the service of, Lord, uh, of the Lord in Krishna consciousness. It is stated in Bhagavad Gita that without the knowledge of the devotee, the Lord arranges for him to be immediately transferred it is stated in Bhagavad Gita that without the knowledge of the devotee, the Lord arranges for him to be immediately transferred to the Lord's transcendental abode just after he leaves the body. After quitting his body, he does not go into the womb of another mother. 
the ordinary common living entity after death is transferred to the womb of another mother, according to his karma or activities to take another type of body. But as far as the devotee is concerned, he is at once transferred to the spiritual world and the association of the Lord. That is the Lord's special mercy. How it is possible is explained in the following verses. Because he is all powerful, the Lord can do anything and everything. He can excuse all sinful reactions. He can immediately transfer a person to Vaikuntha Loka. That is the inconceivable power of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is favorably disposed to the pure devotees. And thus ends our reading for today. We'll continue from text 41 on Monday. Jai Om Vishnu Pad Paramahamsa Sri Pad Bhakti Madhava Puri Maharaj Ki Jai. Jai Srila Prabhupada Srila Guru Maharaj Srila Guru Dev Srila Acharya Dev Srila Shanta Maharaj Ki Jai. Jai Rupa Nuga Guru Varga Ki Jai. Our glories to the assembled devotees, our glories to the worldwide devotees, Sama Bhakti Veda Vrinda Ki Jai. Jai Navadvik Dham Ki Jai, Nishanga Poli Dham Ki Jai, Mayapur Dham Ki Jai. Jagannath Puri Dham Ki Jai, Baladev Subhadra Jagannath Ju Ki Jai. Ganga Mayi Yamuna Mayi Ki Jai, Vrindavan Dham Ki Jai, Giri Govardhan Gupta Govardhan Dham Ki Jai, Sham Kund Radha Kund Ki Jai, Tosa Devi Bhakti Devi Vrinda Devi Ki Jai, Jai Harinam Sankirtan Yajna Ki Jai, Scientific Sankirtan Yajna Ki Jai, Princeton Bhakti Vedanta Institute Ki Jai, Sri Chaitanya Saraswat Institute Ki Jai, Sri Chaitanya Saraswat Mat Ki Jai, Nitai Gaur Premanandi Hari 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 Hare Krishna Dandavat Pranam.